What's up guys? So we want to do kind of a quick video and not super quick, but kind of just go through what are some of the changes? Everybody, a lot of people are familiar with the Adder V2s, right? We launched these at SHOT Show back in January, the big industry show um, up in Las Vegas to big fanfare, right? They were well received because they were, you know, for six months or so a year, we'd had these in development. Um, all of the developmental changes and implements and, and improvements we made on the Adder V2s was really based off direct end user feedback from the Adder V1 series, right? So we've got one here just to kind of show form factors, not dramatically different, but you can tell subtle differences um, if you were to see these. So now that our that our Adder V1s are, are completely sold out through all of our dealers, we'll kind of just say like, for anybody that wasn't familiar or bought an Adder V1 a couple years ago, uses it regularly and is looking to upgrade, what actually changed in Adder V2. So this is just kind of a quick overview of some of the biggest changes. There's a lot more firmware functionality and other things like that that we could go over, but I'm just gonna kind of hit the biggest key points that that were the biggest, most well-received reasons for the changes, right? So we'll start with the biggest one first, and that is basically obviously an upgraded thermal sensor, right? So the Adder V1 series were available in four models. We had two 384s and two 640s. They were both utilizing a 12 micron sub 35 millikelvin sensor, right? So if you're familiar with our Rattler V2s and our Varmint V2 series, those had all been upgraded into the sub 20 millikelvin, right? Which is a very good uh, sensor sensitivity. It's two iterations away from the 35 because the original drum was to sub 25 millikelvin sensors. Those are sub 20. The Adder V2s being the most recent of our new products really is sub 15 millikelvin, right? So in this series, and I've got a couple different ones here, if you'll notice little differences in form factor. So what we've got to is our 50, and there's, there's now an extra model added. So there's still two 384 sensor resolution models with a new sub 15 millikelvin sensitivity. There's two 640 models that you see here. And then there's a new model added completely to our entire assortment. And that's the Adder V2 60 millimeter 1280, right? So what are the, in the 50 and 60 millimeter models, you'll notice it's actually an in-lens LRF, right? So these were the first to the market with an actual in-lens LRF. That was kind of something we always fought against on the original Adder V1s. One of the only, not really complaints, but on the wish list of things guys wanted was, hey, I'd like the 30 mil, I like that tube style over the Varmints or the Compact series. I'd like that to have an, an LRF. There was really no attractive way, in our opinion, to do an LRF on the 30 mil series. We want it to be as sleek and not much wider than the rifle itself. So we had the Varmint V2 series, the new secular LRFs, right? Kind of aimed at the LE market. Those are all integrated LRFs. So we had options. We just didn't have this specific form factor. Well, we worked hard and that's what, you know, our product development guys worked on getting one in the lens. Now this is the 35 millimeter versions in both 35 and 3D4 and 640. This one's external, right? Cause these use a little bit, when you get under 50 millimeter, you don't have as much surface area there. So we were still doing an external LRF module in the 35, 3D4 and in the 35, 640. Those will have different base magnifications, obviously. And then we have one model in the 3D4 series that is a non-LRF completely. It's 35 mil, so there's no external LRF here, but that's basically just to get as competitively priced as possible um, for guys that just want that and didn't have any use for an LRF functionality. So that's the form factor differences. Um, so sensor is obviously the biggest first one. The next one is they utilize new 2560, much larger displays back here in the eyepiece, right? So that can lead to a better image quality. It's not always guaranteed. You can still get good image quality at one for one ratios, but what it does is it's actually physically about a little over double the size as the, you know, the 1080s in the original um, Adder V1 series, right? So it's much more comfortable viewing um, over long periods of time because you just don't have to squint as hard when you're behind the eyepiece for four or five hours. So what that 2560 does too, is it kind of capitalizes on another trend, which is kind of this slow creep towards guys wanting a little bit more base magnification before they start to digitally magnify the optic, right? So, you know, 10, 12 years ago, not many guys wanted over about two, two and a half was about as high as wanted, guys wanted to go mainly driven by hog hunters who hunt close ranges and big groups of hogs and they want a wider field of view. Well, for guys that predator hunters um, in the upper Midwest is beginning more and more popular um, slowly over time. Well, those guys kind of like trending towards three, maybe even three and a half X because they want to start at a bigger number. They don't mind having a more narrow field of view 
because they're shooting longer ranges or covering more wide open territory. So that accomplished two things. And it also allowed us to go to the new, the third thing, which is a semi-circular design. That's more of just kind of a preference. It doesn't function a whole lot different than the you know traditional square or rectangular display that you see. Um, but it does offer some cool end lens, or I mean, just kind of user interface um, within the display as you're using it. And it's just that rounded features at the t on the sides is just what guys are more familiar with with their traditional daytime optics. So that's another one with the displays and its effect on the units and their development. The biggest one obviously is, is putting that, that LRF. They all come with full ballistic calculator as well, right? Some of the previous models that had been doing ballistic calculator at the time could only be done through the app. Well, if you're out somewhere with some connectivity issues or you're out at the range trying to get zeroed in or, or, or test your ballistic calculator out, that can be fishy sometimes. So ours is just built where you can directly put it into the device itself, which guys like, because they don't have to worry about any connectivity issues or anything like that with the app. So you can enter all your ballistic data directly into the device. That was a big plus originally. We'll probably eventually work on a firmware update where maybe you can update through the app as well, rather than it being one or the other. But that's a, that's a, a good feature that guys like with the LRF integration is full ballistic calculation. Um, so another one that we've got is the battery system upgrade. So the Adder V1 still use two internal 18650 batteries, non-removable. And you really just had what we call the emergency hour where one CR-123 only gets you about an extra hour in the field. This was just for guys that were in the field and they're run out of battery and they don't want to go back to the cabin, obviously, and, and, and stop the hunt in the field. So they could just throw in an extra CR-123 here in the top turret and that would give them an extra hour in the field of hunting. The new models still use two internal 18650s, but they, we actually moved the battery to a horizontal because an 18650, which is getting more and more common, obviously, is uh, and, and is readily available. It actually fits horizontally without increasing the diameter across the device. Um, and then we just move the menu navigation from the side on the Adder V1s to the top to account for that horizontal orientation of the 18650. So that was a big change guys like that lasted, you know, this will get you more time and it's a hot swap. So you'll see two indicator, battery indicators on your display in the Adder V2s. One has an I and one has an E. That's just showing the battery life and in your internal that's left and the battery that's now switched over to external, which is your 18650, right? So um, that's a big change too with the battery update. Um, you also notice little subtle things rather than the plastic um, attachment lens caps. These are all new, nicer metal, and these are all magnetic lens caps, right? So they're much, they're not breaking off as easier. We've gotten very little requests since we started shipping these out in January. So that's just, a, they're just nicer lens caps overall, fully magnetic. Um, and, and it's got a good magnet on there where they stay shut pretty easily in the field, you know, without a bunch of moving around. So um, that's another one with the lens cap. Um, of course, I talked about the complete new edition of the 1280 Adder V2, right? So we've got one of those in the Adder and you're familiar with the Evolver, which is kind of the more compact series, kind of a cousin of the Rattler V2 style um, and the 1280, which is a new model completely to the series. Um, and then we've also got, there's, there's multiple functionality things within the ballistic calculator that's obviously new, um, but we've also got new color palettes. So sometimes when you use, even regardless of the size, there's different displays that have different like color capabilities um, with their blacks and whites and what color palettes you can actually use. So sometimes it's not so much a firmware update issue. Sometimes it can actually be hardware related. Well, these new 2560s allowed us to implement new red and green monochrome color palettes. So those are for guys that are, you know, outfitters specifically tend to like, you can tone down the brightness quite a bit where that's not a bad deal uh, with night blindness over a long period of time, even in black hot or white hot. But the red and green monochrome, if you're out there and, and get real night blind, some people seem to be more sensitive than others. But the red and green monochrome, if you're viewing for long periods of time, is much more sensitive on the eye. So you don't come off the device after hours, you know, scanning the same field and, and kind of takes your, your eyes a while to adjust back. So those are getting received pretty, especially the green. Um, it almost kind of looks night vision-esque, but um, it's very, that green color is really light on the eye and guys seem to like that quite a bit as well. Um, so that's it. So those are kind of the biggest features. Um, we'll probably do some additional short videos and going up through some of the other firmware implementation, but that's about it guys. So if you have any other questions or, or want to learn more about the Adder V2, subscribe to the channel and we'll keep that stuff coming.